this is not my cup of tea or that person, I am not that person's cup of tea. It will save you some trauma <laughs> because, you know, it could be traumatic. You feel like you did something wrong when it could just simply be, again, you are not that person's cup of tea. Hello, beautiful creatures. Welcome to my channel. I am a radio of the Witch of Dark Light, and I hope you all are doing magnificent. So this video is going to be a little chatty video. So you, I mean, a little B-roll, but you know, you can go ahead and put me on and do what it is you have to do and listen to me in the background podcast style. Um, I will leave timestamps um, so that you could jump to something will be like three or four topics that I want to talk about and share with you current events, a little magic talk, chit chat. And so these are some of the things I'm going to be talking about. So if you want to hear what it is I have to say, grab something to drink. I have my coffee, which is probably a bad idea. It is currently nighttime and caffeine does keep me up, but um, nonetheless, you know, drinking my coffee. All right, so let's get into it. Can't have one without the other, the dark without the light. Firstly, before I get into the things that I wanted to talk about, for those of you who were on our, uh, my husband and I, we went live um, the other night and it got, it ended kind of, uh, you know, sooner than we wanted to because something, I think it was something that we started talking about where, you know, it started to get a little staticky. Um, YouTube was like, nope, we, you're not doing that. Um, or you know we're in mercury re retrograde shadow phase so maybe it was something about that but it ended and we said that we we're going to take you along with us for those of you who are watching it live um we were going out to our favorite night spot our alternative night spot and we wanted to share that with you but um a couple things after two drinks i was live streaming on my other channel the wrong channel and also, um, it wouldn't let us upload it um, because it was, uh, it flagged us because of the music. So that's that. <laughs> So the first thing I wanted to chit chat about is kind of the direction of things, my evolution, right? So those of you who have been here with me, thank you. <laughs> um, I, you know, I've done, I've made some changes, right? So I've, I had this uh, patron that I've done for a few years and I ended it because I wanted to go another route and I've uh, gotten that new uh, channel um, that's more of the darker things, the more left-hand path things. And a lot of this direction is because I was sharing with uh, some of um, some friends that we spend a lot of time learning how to do candle magic, learning how to do all the tools, the witchy tools of the trade, right? The practical magic while that's all fine and dandy and good and this this because these are the things that's fun right this is the fun part uh learning all about the herbs and the correspondences and the you know the planets and their magic incorporating the uh, everything um to create uh, uh, a spell or uh, tools, working with the tools um, of the craft, but the one thing that gets like kind of left behind, and we always talk about shadow work, right? But I think it's because it's secondary that is the problem. We always hear, you always hear someone talking about, um, I don't know why this magic didn't work. I, I, I can't manifest or I'm not a good witch. Or, you hear disappointment. But the, a lot of the direction that I'm taking currently is to tap into what we probably should do. It's like we're, we're working backwards. 
what we, we should probably do first, I, I have a, a trick for you, a secret. The magic is already in you. You just have to tap into it so that your candle magic, your spells you cast, your honey jars, your money jars, <laughs> and all the jars. If you really want these things to work, you have to understand the magic inside. So I have started working on an advanced witchcraft series and um i i haven't done i missed this uh last week but i'm working on one for next week and hopefully i get that out but a lot of what you will hear me say is it's coming from within you have to tap into your chi your your prana all of this but you have to break through understanding and knowing your to your voice, that inner voice, and uh, your intuition. And this comes from uh, clearing away, going into the darkness, seeing what's there, seeing what could be potentially blocking you, finding out where your true gift is at because it's been hidden down in here. So this is the direction I'm taking, working on the the inner, the, the, the divine, dark divine uh, feminine, you know, working with women. Um, because I feel this is a lot of my my path learning to and working with tapping into that inner wisdom that we carry with us with where the true magic is at so I think um, I wanted to instead of share all of those math which I still would do um, obviously because that's a part of who I am but I'm really more into tapping into finding out going going inside finding the magic inside right because when we were and i'll share a story with you as a kid i had to be about eight i think i was around eight and i was with my sister and uh one of our family friends of the family uh one of our best friends uh and she was a little older than than me maybe a couple of years older but it was the three of us and we were in the room and we've never seen because you know we grew up in a like a religious household so we've never seen uh any any witchy movies or anything like that but something innate that was in us made us say let's let's practice levitating and we didn't even know what i'm i'm calling it levitating because that's <laughs> That's what I know now, but we we were something led us to say, okay, let's sit around and 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 just think about, visualize, and send magic to the person. And one of us would take turns laying down, and we would just sit there and kind of just I don't know what we were doing. Each person that laid down felt like they were going somewhere, like they were traveling astrally. This is what's inside. We didn't we didn't have a lesson. We didn't go take a course or we didn't all those things are well and good but if you don't work with the inner that has been lost the inner that is already there where you can just take you your body and go into the woods and cast that magic <laughs> without any of these tools without any of the candles and all the things um it is in you the other things are just extensions uh I said it right. Yeah. <laughs> the other things, outward things, are a, an extension of your magic and a way for it to be channeled through. So this is what I I want to work on. This is the things that I'm talking about because um, this is where the healing takes place. And a lot of times, in order for your magic to work at its best, or even work at all, healing has to take place. Acknowledgement of what is in there has to take place. The understanding of your intuition and that inner voice. The confidence to, to know this is your, your intuition speaking. So once you really get comfortable with your intuition, then you can say well wait a minute this doesn't feel right and um I, you know maybe i shouldn't do that there's a basic structure right when you're taught to do whatever magic it is you're you're taught you do a b and c a b and c for everybody across the board is not going to work so for example perfect example our household i'm more esoteric and my husband is more science scientific but we always understand one another and manifest the same kind of reality because we these are all parts of the same thing it's just where where um we work differently to get to that end goal 
and A, B, and C doesn't always work for every individual. So A, B, and C for my husband to manifest something, he'll have to add that little science into the A, B, and C. And me, I'm going to add all like the esoteric things into the A, B, and C. So everyone, you start with your core structure, but in order for it to be work for you, you have to fi figure out, follow what's in here um, to make that magic manifest. And I hope I'm making sense um, because I feel like this, this is what is in the zeitgeist. This is the thing that is um, being brought forth through a lot of individuals uh, finding our inner power because this is what's going to be necessary for our future uh, collective future um, be know your inner voice uh, know your power know it's inside and this is you carry it with you We are coming into this uh, lunar, this eclipse season, where we're starting out with the lunar eclipse in Libra. And this is a tell telling of this type of energy because we have to uh, find harmony and, and think about the things that no longer serve us. Uh, so you hear this all the time, but it's the truth. You have to think about your boundaries. You know, this, this Libra energy is, is the, the finding the boundaries because you're giving, giving, giving and, and not receiving. So this, this, uh, lunar eclipse is all about, uh, boundaries, harmony, finding the balance and knowing what that is, right? Even knowing what that is before you can even find the balance, right? You have to know what is necessary for you to find the balance and the harmony in your life. That's my little tangent on that. <laughs> but yeah, so that's why I've shifted a little bit or we, we all evolve, but this is the direction that I'm taking. And it's more about the magic in here and not always necessarily about the, the physical things, right? That the magic of the physical objects. So yeah, that's that. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is, and this is something that I didn't, I didn't have a name for it <laughs> before, but um, I had not too long ago learned about what that means when someone says being delusional. And I realized I connected with that because I am so optimistic. Having, if you are capable of still being grounded to reality and what that looks like, but also able to have a, a nice state of being delusional, and for me, that's like I stay tapped into and, and I'm talking about spirituality and magic. So for me, what ignites that is I I'm, I love sci fi. I love in my mind. I'm like, I can do that magic. I can be a Marvel character. It's like uh, that the sigil magic, right, where you write it in a book. You're telling the story and you believe this story and it manifests. Right. So it's like you having the confidence enough to know that what you want to achieve, you can. And um, sometimes you you fall and you got to get back up. This is this is still staying in that state of being delusional. You might fall, but you say, okay, wait a minute, something's wrong because I know I could do this. So let me let me see what it is that went wrong and let me work on that. And so you don't give up. You keep going. You stay in that delusional state knowing that you can achieve this thing. And then you go and then you say, okay, this is what happened. Now I know why I didn't get it. So let's do this again. <laughs> so I just wanted to put that out there that um, this can be a part of that as well. So like you first go within and find your voice and find your magic and when you do you go into that delusional state and you're like i got this um i can do this i can achieve this i can be this i want it and it's gonna happen that's the the power of knowing right when you know what's inside then you can build that confidence so these things kind of work hand in hand you can't be delusional and not know what you are working with right you need to know what's going on in there so that you can know what it is that you are the power you have to be delusional with
So the last thing I want to talk about is knowing that you are not everyone's cup of tea. This will save you emotional issues. <laughs> and what I mean by that is being sad or feeling like a failure or feeling like you're not worthy, being angry. If someone doesn't like the way you, you, you do things or, and I'm gonna like just, let's speak about being a creator or someone that's a mentor or someone that teaches or you provide some kind of service. Someone says, I, I don't like the way, you know, that sucked or I don't like the way you did it. They didn't vibe with or resonate with what you um, share. Yes, you take con constructive criticism, but sometimes you're just not that person's cup of tea. That person also uh, needs to realize that, you know what, I might not like this, but it's probably because this is not something that I resonate with doesn't necessarily mean that that person's thing that they're providing uh, is not right. It's just not right for me, right? Understanding this can release you from a world of feeling unworthy because as a creator, we get all of these comments, right? Um, especially what it, it depends on what it is that you are, what your niche is. But in any case, we've there's always those comments out there and you know, sometimes they say you suck or or you're wrong or you're this, you're that, or, you know, all the negative things. And I would I would be okay if it's constructive criticism when then we can have a conversation. A lot of times as creators we get these these a lot of these comments. You know, I just I just delete, remove. It wears and tears on you after a while if you provide a service, whatever it is that you do. That feedback, depending on what it is, can wear on you. One of the things that can save you from a big bulk of that is knowing that, you know what, you and I, we don't, you know, our frequencies don't quite al align. And, and we're not, everyone is not meant to mesh. If we can understand that, if we get that understanding that it's not for every situation, but majority of the times, if you realize this is not my cup of tea or that person, I am not that person's cup of tea, it will save you some trauma <laughs> because you know it could be traumatic you feel like you did something wrong when it could just simply be again you are not that person's cup of tea so specifically speaking to any of you creators that are watching this just remember when you get those comments remember you may not be that person's cup of tea I'm working on what that next video is going to be for the advanced witchcraft um, series. If you're watching this and you got to this part of the video thus far, if you would like to share what you would like to see in the as a topic in the advanced witchcraft series, uh, let me know. Let me know if there's something that you want to see the advanced or beyond the basic side of uh, uh, something in, in witchcraft. But like I rambled quite a bit and quite enough. This is me feeling more comfortable with just talking to you. Because a lot of times in the beginning, I always felt like I had to, and I love the theatrics. If you know me, you know I love to do all the, the, the things with sharing witchcraft. But I also felt like just talking to you here isn't, wasn't enough. So I had to get through that and get to my um, state of being and, and, and confidence when talking to you guys and, and to know that it's I'm enough, right? I'm enough to just sit and, and have a chat with you and if we are one another's cup of tea then it's going to be a great conversation, right? That is all I wanted to share with you lovelies. Like, subscribe if this is your first time here. Welcome. Check out my other videos. Um, there's a wide range of assortment of things on here. All things witchy. But that is all I want to share with you in this video on today. Um, I love you all and into the shadows.